Hello and welcome to text classification using uh, NLP. Uh, in this particular um, brief video, I'll be talking about uh, some of the models that are used for text classification. And we will also be seeing uh, a pre-trained model in TensorFlow how to implement for uh, text classification. Text classification actually arrives in um, several locations, for example, uh, for for different kind of products and business, uh, people write reviews and reviews might be positive or negative or maybe the rating from one to five, where five means the best product or one means uh, really a bad product. It can appear in restaurants, uh, in, in movies, in, in different kind of... Um, it can also appear in social media, for example, to find out the the extent of the text, whether uh, it, it belongs to a particular category of test, uh, text or not. A and um, there are several applications, there are several model. Uh, recently, actually, recurrent neural networks, they, they uh, appear to be the best solution for text classification tasks. Although there are uh, plain neural networks as well, based on, um, based on, based on the type of embeddings that you use, uh, that may also work very well. So let's dive in and uh, let's see what the problem is and how uh, we can solve the problem using a recurrent neural network. And then we will see how can we uh, use a sentence level embedding and solve the problem using the plain neural network and we will eventually code that in, um, in Python. So first of all, I'll be using a word, word level embedding model and for that, we will be using a recurrent neural network. So let's say we have a binary classification problem. Let's say uh, this uh, product is uh, good. Um, and that's the sentence, let's say. And for this sentence, the review is, let's say, positive. Let's say we have uh, zero or one. And the second sentence in our training data set is, let's say, um, um, I will not use it again. Um, and that might be a negative review. So if we use, for example, word embeddings, so what we will be doing is uh, for the first, and we may be having several uh, sentences and their corresponding labels as a training da data set available. So focusing on the first uh, sentence, for example, the, the word level embedding will do the following. It will convert the first, um, first word to a feature vector, may not be a one hot encoding, maybe a word to vec encoding, or maybe a BERT embedding, or maybe a GLOF embedding. Uh, so let me call that as uh, X1, uh, which is the first word of this sentence. Then uh, this particular uh, word is has the different kind of embedding. Let me call that as uh, x2. And similarly for this x3 and for this x4. And then we have this as y. So let me call that as x1, uh, which is the sentence one, sentence one, and the corresponding label as y1. So, so the job of uh, a model or a recurrent neural network, what it does is really, um, so in this particular case, for example, when we have four, um, when we have four uh, words in this particular case, so let's say this is a particular uh, recurrent neural network block, maybe an LSTM or maybe a GRU or something like that, or maybe any recurrent neural network model. So what it will, what we will be doing it is uh, we will be uh, giving the x1 feature vector to it, and uh, the activations obviously the activations from uh, zero maybe all zeros, and then we will be giving um, we will be giving the same model let's say the same kind of block, uh, we will be giving x1 uh, at time instant two, and then we will be giving the same block recurrent block as the third input of the same sentence. And then uh, we will unroll this, we will unroll this, uh, the number of times we have word for this particular sentence, for example, the four words. Um, and then uh, after that, it will produce a y hat, um, let's say y one hat. 
and um, because we also have our uh, label with us so we will compute a loss here loss function maybe a cross entropy loss um, or maybe a squared loss uh, better one is the logistic loss which is cross entropy loss in this particular case uh, maybe this minus one is just zero uh, rather than taking and the original y1 so that's the loss then uh, we will apply the standard back propagation uh, actually in recurrent neural network the back propagation is known as uh, back propagation through time we will apply that and update the shared weights all the way down to for the first example if you're using the stochastic gradient descent then we will unroll this for uh, one two three four five six six times so for for the second example when the second example will be presented here the the recurrent block will be unrolled for example x21 uh, x22 down to uh, x24 and then um, then we will be having another block the same block repeated for the fifth word which is it um, x25 and then for this word and then we will be computing finally uh, y2 hat and we will be computing loss for y2 uh, and the back propagation will apply so if the sentences they have different number of words no problem recurrent neural network can handle and all these uh, blocks they have shared parameters and we are really good to go about that at test time, for example, what happens is if we now have uh, if we now have a word, uh, let's say this looks great. Let's say that's the that's the review for which we really want to find out whether that's a positive review or a negative review. What we will do is we will actually uh, after training we will actually convert this. Uh, to an embedding convert this to an embedding convert this to an embedding and we will unroll this three times so one for this then we will apply this for pass then we'll apply this and we'll generate a prediction and that's the prediction uh, whether it's one or zero for this particular sentence so that's how um, the uh, uh, text classification works uh, for binary case, uh, in case if you have more than two classes, you can apply a softmax unit here, not a big deal. You can generalize it to multiple classes. So uh, if you're using word level embeddings, um, then you can use recurrent neural network or the blocks might be LSTMs or GRUs, whatever the architecture is. And um, depending upon the lengths uh, of different sentences in terms of the number of words, the recurrent neural network will unroll itself um, in the training time as well as uh, at the testing time. So this kind of model is working really well um, uh, recently. There are also uh, sentence level embeddings uh, used for text classification. And that is, uh, regardless of the, the length of the input sentence, you generate the embedding for the whole sentence. Uh, so this is for sentence one, that's the whole embedding which itself, for example, which itself may use word embeddings and then combine the word embeddings uh, to make a sentence level embedding. Now, even if you have uh, sentences of different length, the embeddings will be having same length. It is like the ordinary feature vector for corresponding to a sentence rather than a word. So at the end of the day, you will be having a training data. For each sentence, you will be having a vector and uh, a label. So a second sentence, vector, and a label and so on. And now you can train an ordinary uh, neural network to actually classify different sentences um, into, into binary class or whatever number of classes do you have. So um, both models are there. Uh, both have their uh, strengths and weaknesses. Um, for, for the illustration of this text classification on movie reviews data set, uh, let me quote this sentence level embedding uh, uh, let me use the uh, in, in TensorFlow, we will be using TensorFlow Hub, a pre-trained model. We will be using embeddings from there. And um, let's have an example for uh, text classification using the sentence level embedding. So um, for that, you need to install uh, TensorFlow, uh, TensorFlow Hub and TensorFlow datasets. Uh, if you think that's hard for you to install on your machine, you can use Google Colab, no problem. 
Um, so let's import uh, numpy as np uh, required normally always import uh, tensor flow as uh, tf import um, tensor flow hub as hub uh, this is for pre-trained models uh, available there for embeddings uh, import um, tensor flow data sets as uh, tensor flow data sets so let's see if all the imports are working fine yeah they're working so next we actually load the training and validation data set from movie uh, imdb review so let's uh, train uh, let's say train data td training data and let's say validation data is equal to uh, let's say tfts dot load and let me give the to the load let me give the name as what data set we are really interested in let's say imdb reviews and <clears throat> what are the splits the split is um, in train so train and test or validation let's say these are the splits we want to do and uh, after the split uh, we really want to have for example um, whether we want is a supervised yes supervised equals true so after that it will actually uh, load the data set uh, it may take time uh, on your machine um, to load this particular data set uh, actually, I have already loaded this data set earlier as well, so it is uh, it picked a cached copy. Uh, if it downloads, uh, it, it actually downloads for the very first time, uh, which may take a couple of minutes, but that's perfectly okay. Now, um, let's basically um, find out um, some pre-trained model for sentence level embedding. Uh, the pre-trained model I'm using for sentence level embedding is basically the uh, English Google News, uh, trained on English uh, Google News, actually it is on uh, uh, 130 GB of corpus, corpus of data, um, and we, we are going to use that for, uh, for, for sentence level embedding. So um, uh, let's, let's use the path, uh, embedding path, let's say the URL of embedding, embedding URL that's uh, HTTPS um, I should have copied that tensorflow hub dot development slash Google slash tensorflow to um, preview slash Google News SW IVEL 20 dimensional slash one so that's our URL uh, that's the URL for the embedding so let's actually uh, pick that hub layer let's say that is hub dot Kiras Kiras layer and we have to give the URL of embedding then the input shape is uh, the input shape is just uh, we will define that D type as uh, tensorflow dot string and uh, trainable. Do we really want uh, this embedding to be trainable? Uh, if you want this embedding to be trainable, then uh, the weights will change uh, for on on your data set as well. If you keep this value as false, then it will be it will be used as a static feature extractor, and um, the weights of this will no longer be uh, changing. So I'm right now I'm writing true, but you can write false as well, no problem. So oh, uh, TensorFlow have, has no attribute Keras layer. I guess I have messed up with the spellings here. Yeah. So again, um, it will take some time to download because I have pre-downloaded that on my machine, so uh, everything is working uh, just uh, very quickly. But on your machine, for the very first time, it may take a couple of minutes to download that. Now let me build a model here. Um, let's say model is equal to 
tensorflow.keras uh, dot sequential uh, let's say that's our model then I add different layers model dot add first I add the hub layer and then um, I add let's say because that's that's a sentence level embedding what it will do is it actually convert each sentence to the same length feature vector and so I can now use an ordinary neural network to do that so let me add model dot add uh, tensorflow dot keras dot layers dot uh, dense and let me use this layer with let's say 10 uh, units and activation activation might be uh, relu so let's use relu and uh, finally I can use uh, a dense layer with only one unit because it's a binary classification model so or maybe I can add another layer for example tf dot keras dot layers dot dense uh, maybe I use for example uh, four units and activation is uh, let's say relu again and now I use my final classifier mo uh, unit add tf dot keras dot layers dot dense and now I use just one of these so that's let's say this is my model um, and now I will uh, uh, train my model um, using uh, first of all I have to compile my model I have to set certain uh, parameters here so model dot compile let's say uh, optimizer let's say that is uh, maybe uh, RMS prop or Atom or SGD or something like that uh, then I have to set my loss function so loss equals to tensorflow.keras dot losses dot binary cross entropy let's say um, and we can set the from logits as true um, and then I have to set the uh, metric so let me set the metric as well um, matrix equals to uh, let's say accuracy so I guess all set that's our model let's now train the model um, so for example history equals model dot fit and we already have our training data so t data dot shuffle if you really want to shuffle it so we can shuffle it so let's say 10,000 dot uh, plus mini batch gradient descent so let's set the batch size as uh, maybe maybe uh, 256 so and then we can also set the number of epochs because it will take a lot of time so I'm just setting the number of epochs as 2 just to uh, just to just to give you an idea because the training will take a lot of time uh, we can also set the validation data if validation validation data validation data and that is basically VD validation data dot batch and maybe we set the batch as 256 here and uh, we can set the output verbose as one so um, this is the actual training uh, that is going to happen it may take um, some time because um, because there are so many parameters in the hub layer uh, we uh, we have also make that as uh, trainable so it is training that as well and then we have added a couple of layers um, as fully connected layer then a finally uh, final layer this one you might be wondering why we have not applied an activation like softmax here because uh, the loss uh, when we use uh, uh, cross entropy loss so it is actually handled there automatically so this uh, basically is done now we have our model and now we can basically um, we can basically classify different batches different batches of data if we really want 
So for example, we can, uh, once we have this model, we can now have result, for example, model.evaluate, um, uh, and we can test this on, uh, let's say, validation data, although we have used that batch, let's say, um, 256, and uh, let's say, verbose equals two, and that's our result. Uh, that's the evaluation. Now it is uh, basically evaluating that on whole validation data. And now we can actually print the accuracy and stuff if we really want. For example, for A, um, B in zip model dot metric, metric names, and then we have this result. Um, and we can just simply print uh, the um, validation loss, for example, we can simply print B, and that will actually give us the uh, the values. So, for example, these are the values in in this particular validation set. Um, and and by the way, this is um, so. Let me let me actually um, print the name as well. So, A and B and so that's the loss and that's the accuracy just for two epochs. Uh, if we increase the number of epochs, we are expecting much more. So that's the basic text classification. You can have your own text data and you can go for recurrent neural networks rather than sentence level embedding. You can use the word level embedding and stuff like you can You can change the embedding. Uh, you may change the embedding from this to something else, uh, pre-trained pre embedding. You may turn this to be false, to not alter the weights of the embedding and just use the final layers uh, trainable. I mean, you can play with it on your data set and you can come up with your own model that might be working very well on your uh, data set. Um, and further, if you have a classification problem that is that takes more than two classes, you can convert this to the number of units as your classes. And you can uh, convert this binary cross entropy to simply um, the cross entropy, uh, yeah, or sparse cross entropy. So uh, that's about it uh, for text classification. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, please uh, like our video if you really like this content and um, uh, subscribe our channel and share this video to your fellows. Uh, hope to see you next time.